what you're expecting in terms of those, those trade data out from China today. Kate, it's been a big week in terms of numbers coming out from China and you're right, yesterday we saw an initial read on the July conditions uh, in China and while inflation was quite tame, showing that the People's Bank of China has plenty of room to move, I guess the number that we were watching closely was the industrial production numbers and the retail sales numbers. Industrial production we were watching to get a sense of what the export market might be like and we did see industrial production actually slowing down to 9.2% in July. What the market had been expecting was industrial production actually to rise to 9.8% to a four-month high. Instead, we saw a slowdown in production. And retail sales was also being closely eyed to see the strength of the domestic economy over there. And we were expecting to see a steady result at 13.7%. Instead, we did see a weaker than expected result coming in at 13.1%. So going into these trade numbers, there are quite low expectations. We know the import side collapsed in uh, June, and that was quite a shock for the market where we saw growth of just 6.3%. We we are expecting to see a bit, bit of an improvement there up to 7%. So we're going to be watching that import number very closely, seeing that it has collapsed from double digit growth now into the single digits. We're looking at 6 to 7%. And the export side, well, we know that Europe is a key factor here and we are expecting to see a slowdown from the double digit growth that we saw in June of 11.3% down to just 8% but these numbers are going to be crucial expecting to see a trade surplus of $35 billion but all in all the numbers seem to support that uh, the PBOC has room to move on interest rates and there were, that we're likely to see more cuts to help stimulate the Chinese economy. Yeah, Julia, with all of that in mind, the market today, I guess we'll uh, hope we might see some kind of movement after that China data because there's not much else out there other than that RBA statement. All in all, it's been a fantastic week for the Australian share market. We're actually looking at the fourth consecutive week of uh, weekly gains and that's the biggest stretch of gains that we've seen for the Australian market since January. This week's all been all about the rotation from the low beta areas into the high beta areas and that's reflected in the numbers. Overall the market's up 2% in the week to date. The best areas have been information technology which has been uh, driven by computer share which has had a fantastic week on the back of its, uh, uh, its, its earnings numbers and then it's been the materials and the energy space which has bounced back very strongly. But on the flip side we've seen investors, traders getting out of those defensive areas. So if we have a look at those areas which have lost ground. They're the areas like telecom, uh, the property sector, utilities, as well as the healthcare space. So we're expecting to see that kind of trend continue, especially given the lead from uh, commodities overnight. A slight gain for both oil and gold, up by about 0.2%. Our miners managing to see gains on London as well as in New York. We saw BHP up by 0.5% in London and up by 0.8% in New York. So altogether, it does look like a bit of consolidation on the Australian share market. However, we are expecting once again that rotation to continue even though it does seem like the strong gains and the strong trend that we saw earlier on in the week seems to be flattening out.